All right, going to do a quick video, just listing off a few scriptures, uh, showing why the born again saint ought to have nothing to do with Halloween, or as I call it, it's pretty much the holy day of the underworld. That's when you really get down to it, because it's all about death worship. So, going to show some scriptures on the matter, and I've done videos on Halloween in the past showing that it's connected to the child sacrifice, uh, druidic paganism. So it's blatantly of the devil. Like there can be some disagreements, you know, like you'll have disagreements and contention over things like Christmas or Easter. I personally don't do Christmas, but it's kind of unanimous among the born again saints that Halloween is like basically you ought to have nothing to do with it. Uh, so anyway, here's some scriptures because like I said, Halloween is basically just death worship. It's just worship of death, worship of all this, you know, undead stuff. And Satan is actually connected with death and murder in the scriptures. So by extension, Halloween is just basically devil worship. You know, and you know, it's just cliche. Well, what does the scriptures say? John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, He is a, for he is a liar and the father of it. You know? Satan's a murderer. When you really get down to the facts of the matter, you know, Satan is pretty much the, the originator of sin. He's the author of sin. Sorry, sorry to the Calvinists out there who try to make God the author of sin. Yeah. Just had to make a kick at Calvinism right there. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. 1 John 3, 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, referring to Satan, who slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Interesting thing I want to point out as well is obviously Satan was the one who filled Cain with, up with this murderous kind of hatred to commit a murder. A uh, reason why I'm, I might want to point something out is the fact of whenever you hear about serial killers talking about, oh, I heard voices in my head telling me to go do this or telling me to go commit this murder. Yeah, it's because it's, it's basically devils. It's devil spirits, okay? It's not mental illness, as the psychiatrist would say. It's just devil spirits, you know, telling them to go do things. Why? Because Cain right here, he was of that wicked one, and you could basically argue he was hearing voices in his head, the voice of Satan telling him to go kill his brother. You know? And that's pretty much what Halloween is. It's just death worship. So that's, you know, one thing I wanted to point out. John chapter 10, verse 10. Oh, great. My dog and the cat are going at it again. All right. Just had to deal with some issue there. Uh, it's funny how just, you know, kid shows always show cats and dogs not getting along. But then when you actually have a cat and dog, you realize it's actually pretty much rooted in reality. For some reason, they just cannot get along. I don't, I don't know why. Felines and... Uh, what do they call them? Canines, I guess, have some weird kind of feud with each other. That seems to be natural. But anyway, back to the scriptures. So I was going to read John chapter 10, verse number 10, showing how essentially the fact that Halloween is death worship and therefore by extension worship of Satan. John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Hmm, interesting. You also can compare it over to Proverbs 13 verse 15 where it talks about you know the way of transgressors is hard you see it's actually living a sinful lifestyle that is actually the hard life that really gets you down not living in holiness so I had to do a kick at the antinomians as well jo uh, job chapter 28 verse 22 job 28 verse 22 destruction and death say we have heard the fame thereof with our ears Okay, the reason why I mentioned that verse is because, you know, destruction and death, if you, you know, look at the Hebrew word, it is like, basically the Hebrew word for destruction, when you have like a, as a kind of a title, uh, it can be referring to Satan, because why? Well, you go to Revelation chapter 9, and you have the name of the angel of the uh, bottomless pit, and his name is, let's go to the verse, and this is really isn't my notes, this is kind of just on the spot, really, but uh, basically his name in Hebrew is, is, is uh, Abaddon, which if you look at the, what the word actually means in the Hebrew, and I'm not this kind of guy who just always goes to the Hebrew, I just want to just make a point, is essentially his word, his basically name in Hebrew, Ad, Abaddon, basically means a destroying angel. And then in the Greek, his word is, uh, what was it, Apollyon, and it basically means essentially a destroyer. So when it talks about destruction, you know, saith, whatever, uh, you could argue that it's basically Satan talking there, essentially. But just want to make that point. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 15. Hebrews 2, verse 14 to 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that, uh, that through death he might destroy him that hath the power of death, that had the power of death, that is, the devil. 
and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Essentially what's going on is that if you're getting involved in Halloween and you're a saved born again saint, all you're doing is just kind of, you know, it's basically a throwback to when you're still lost and you're under that power of death and death and, the, and Satan. Why would you want to go back to that? Why would you want to go back to, why would you want to basically go back to something that's reminiscent of when you're lost, you know, reminiscent of when you're a child of the devil, you know, when Satan had power over you, why would you want to do that? I mean, like, why would you want to do that? You know, if you're, if you're basically level headed, if you're a saint, why would you want to even do that? You know? And like not carnal, put it that way. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 35 to 36. Again, I don't have a whole lot of notes on this thing. Just more just kind of on the spot, really. But uh, just showing some scriptures demonstrating the fact that Halloween is of the devil blatantly. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 35 to 36. For whoso findeth life, findeth me, sorry, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. You know, when you really get down to it. And, you know, Halloween, it's just all about witchcraft and, and Satanism and vampires. Anything, oh, you're, you know, you're just being legalistic. So apparently I'm being legalistic for saying you shouldn't be involved in a holiday that is worship of death and destruction and all this other stuff, you know. And again, I'm not applying this on non-Christians because, you know, there is the mistake some people would make of applying Christian standards on, you know, non-Christians. The thing is that Paul's commands and the commands in the New Testament are written to Christians. So these are just for the saints. If you're lost, you, you know, you're already a child of the devil, so I mean, just really, this is not for you. This is just more of an admonishment to the saint to not get involved in this witchcraft holiday. So anyway, wanted to point that out. Uh, Halloween, by by being death worship, is by extension devil worship because Satan is connected with death and murder. So anyway, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.